Hi, I am Demi. I am the digital and social media editor for Indie 1023, and I am here with Noah Fryanya. How are you? <laughs> um, thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. I'm so grateful that you had the time to do this interview. I'm sure you've probably done like a thousand of them in the past like day or so. No, actually, not too many. Like just like a couple here and there. Um, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Is it weird kind of doing this whole like digital interview thing versus being like in person? Um, not too much because I guess like before like you do a lot of phonos anyway and I guess you're in the states as well so like I probably wouldn't I mean I guess I may I might be there I might have been there now but yeah 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 yeah, it's, it's, for me, it's a little weird because I, I was, um, I was talking to Howard, who's part of your label earlier, and yeah, I'm not like used to doing these kind of interviews, and so getting used to like the technical side of Zoom and like <laughs> making sure that everything sounds good and all that kind of stuff is just like such a new realm, and I'm sure a lot of people are like slowly adjusting to it, but like, oh yeah. man, it's weird times, weird times. <laughs> for me, like doing all the, like the home recordings instead of just like going to the studio um like the ones I sent for you guys as well like that's been that's been you it's like oh okay like different part of your brain you're using <laughs> yeah because it's like, like if you were here you would perform like in the studio but yeah. it's yeah you have to like kind of like pre-record something and um get that done and send that out to like all of the different people and stuff yeah so you're um located in London right now right Mm -hmm. yeah how is it going there um uh, we're just gonna enter like another lockdown tomorrow so and oh, wow. like, everyone just found out yesterday so i think everyone's a bit like oh crazy um yeah like, shopping shopping drinks drinks yep uh but i mean yeah everything everything's okay like just i think everyone's like at the end of the year now it's like okay the year can end now <laughs> yeah I'm done with this 2020 <laughs> uh, 2020 2020 has been quite a ride quite a ride but first off I want to congratulate you on your new EP feeling lucky which just came out last Friday super stoked I've had it on a little rotation ever since it dropped <laughs> have you been able to kind of um, absorb all of the positive feedback that you've been getting from it because I already see a lot of like reviews are starting to roll in and you're just like on a roll hey um yeah I was surprised to be honest I don't really like I kind of forgot what releasing music was like and I guess because it wasn't much like lead up to it because you're just like by yourself at home um I didn't realize like people would like be tweeting me and like <laughs> reviews I was like oh people review me pieces like cool <laughs> great <laughs> Yeah, yeah so that has good. to be so weird, especially because it's like you're not like physically doing press or anything like that. So it's just kind of like it dropped and here it is. Like, yeah. Well, um, is this a project you've been working on like throughout quarantine or have you been working on the songs like lap like previously or something like that? Um, a bit of both, I guess. I started writing them. Um, uh, last year, so 2019, and started recording some of them that year as well. And then, yeah, basically finished them off kind of in and out of a lockdown. And yeah, um, yeah, so uh, yeah, I say a mixture. Um, yeah, so they're not being like too, like, they're not like, it's not like quarantine music, but <laughs> <laughs> inside of my mind in quarantine, but. There's definitely a part of that in the process, <laughs> yeah. It's interesting that you say like quarantine music because like some of the artists that I've been interviewing have been have found it hard to be creative while in quarantine, while others have been just like exploding with just like projects and ideas and all of that kind of thing. Have did you have that issue this year? Uh, yeah, I wasn't very creative um, first part of the year, probably like six months or so. And I think I mean I was planning. To like just try and take this year as like a take a step back do some writing um yeah but then i guess when everything just like went weird and everything got cancelled and um i was trying to be creative and i thought oh great this is a great opportunity for me to like write loads of things and, yeah i can just make loads of stuff and then i was like oh 
you know something just didn't feel right and like i couldn't really didn't feel like i even wanted to look for some of that inspiration it was just like a yeah. sit back and watch <laughs> the yeah. world kind of thing i was just like whoa yeah yeah i i feel that like sitting back and kind of observing and like soaking in everything that's happening is just this year has been a lot of processing and so um what were some things that you um, experienced this year or witnessed this year that kind of really changed your outlook on life? Hmm. I guess like, um, oh, what changed my outlook? I think just like maybe noticing how, I mean, I've always been aware of like social media and like, you know how that's like a big part of my life now and a big part of like everyone's life but like I think witnessing I feel like I was witnessing it in a different way like seeing how much like how dangerous it can be and how, how good it can be and realizing that I have a, like a responsibility to use it as well mm. I mean I think yeah I think if you if I'm already using it it's like then I have a responsibility to use as well I can't just be like oh I'm just gonna like not care about it for a bit or I mean, I think it's definitely healthy to not <laughs> spend your whole life on it. But I just felt this like sort of like this like responsibility, like okay, it's really serious. Like, yeah, social media this year has just like had such an impact on like every single aspect of life. <laughs> it's been it's been insane. Like you can't escape it, even if you're not on it. I feel like you're still kind of like part of like a social media kind of community. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I want to talk about your um your I almost said album. Basically, it might as well be. It has so much storytelling for me. It's a lot to like take in, which is why I've had it on repeat because I'm just like, what is going on here? Um, so basically, like your songwriting is just as powerful in this EP as I would say as Miss Universe, which came out last year. Um, and what I like about your music the most, but might also be like something that's like concerning is that use repetition a lot like in your songwriting and for me especially in this EP it just sounds like you're kind of talking to a lover who just won't listen and so um I kind of feel like you use the repetition to kind of like pound like hammer away your point across like do you feel like that's kind of what you were going through when you were writing this music yeah definitely um, <laughs> you, you got it um <laughs> I didn't realize but you put it so accurately it's definitely like I think definitely like in crash like I was mm -hmm. kind of like I was trying to get to the, the the person in my head as well most of the time it's like mm. you know it's like you've got to break out of the cycle that you're putting yourself through um and then so, on a song like same damn luck I was definitely trying to um <laughs> get across something to someone else and they weren't really I hear it or they weren't there to listen to it do you know what I mean it's like yeah just not yeah, you're just talking to the mirror, like. <laughs> it's interesting, because, like, I feel like just, like, kind of, like, people not hearing you is kind of another, like, comparison to social media as well as, like, kind of using that platform to be heard. And so mm -hmm. I feel like all of this is just kind of, like, full circle. <laughs> yeah, definitely, yeah. I think, yeah, it feels a lot like sometimes you're just putting it in like the bin or like a void and it's like no, no one's gonna no one's listening to the really what I'm really trying to say here they just want to um, see that thing or look at this thing or they just want to listen to whatever they're ready to hear and I guess yeah that's the same yeah. that's the same social media yeah Crazy. well also kind of something that has paired lovely with your uh, EP has been your visuals and I had to like look into this a little further but uh i watched some youtube videos where you actually were working with your sisters with elif and molly i believe yeah and i just thought that was so cool i did not know that all of you had this like artistic background and that you collaborate on a lot of your visuals and a lot of your projects and so it made me look at the the videos for crash and for um same damn luck like completely different because I was just like this has such a personal touch this is so much deeper than a relationship with like a contracted director or something like that it's like they're your family so how how did that come like 
how did that start? Like when you first started your EPs and started coming out as a singer songwriter, was that a conversation that you had with your sisters? Like, hey, let's let's do these projects together. And how has that shifted now? Oh, well, it's funny you say that because um, my sister, my older sister, Molly, she she's directed all my music videos and like taken a lot of the photos that I use for like press and um, Instagram and stuff. Um, so, I mean, but that like, her being a photographer and her being a director, She's been doing that. She's six years older than me, so I guess she's always been like my older sister. So, and she's been doing that her whole life. So I think I feel like that relationship started from a really young age. We'd just be like making movies or like doing a photo shoot, and it was like woo, fun. So when it came to doing music videos, it, I didn't even have to think about asking or thinking of anyone else. It was just like obviously I'm gonna work with my sister because she knows what she's doing. I know what she's doing. Like it's fun. We've always wanted to make something properly, so it's just started from the first release, really, I guess. And then, yeah, it's been cool. And then my younger sister, um, she does more like painting, art, uh, art kind of things. So I just try and I'm always asking her opinion, um, uh, like visually and like with artwork. And she also like did quite a few shows last year, um, singing. Mm-hmm band with me as well which is fun she was a bit busy. so cool yeah I just love like the family affair collaboration <laughs> it's more because my mom my mom actually came on the trip to make um same damn luck yes. and, our cousin, <laughs> and our cousin as well because he's a um DOP so he does um film as well so it was like everyone <laughs> everyone's here it's a family party and then what you do it's like everyone like wants to be involved it's like oh i can i can do something i can do this it's like why didn't you ring me you need to ring me next time like (laughs) so now you know anytime you film a video just like put out like a group chat (laughs) to like the full family like everyone just come everyone just come because that's why i so we have like on indie we have this list running of like all the different staff picks like your favorite music from 2020 and all that stuff and so i picked music videos And Same Damn Luck was definitely on that list because for me, it was nostalgic of like a family video, like back in the 90s, you putting together a compilation of a bunch of different like stills and videos and everything is just so raw and fun. And like, I just love the energy and the visuals. And so, yeah, it was great. (laughs) Thanks. Thanks. And so I got one last question for you before we wrap up. And um, I don't know if you are looking forward to 2021, but is there something like, what are you the most excited about in the new year? I am very excited to be hopefully at any point playing a show or like going on tour again, (laughs) going to the States again or like anywhere. Like I'll be really excited to like just jump on a plane and do it Um, or just jump on a bus, like wherever we're going. I don't mind. Um, anywhere <laughs> anywhere and I know my band feels the same they're like oh, I want to, do you want to play something um and that's that's kind of it I guess on the show side for me like I really also want to like just um write and like complete my second album and I'll be like super happy if I do that so oh, well we're excited for both those things <laughs> I am also like how I am willing to travel as far as I need to go to see a live show. Let me just figure all of that out. Um, and I hope it happens. But thank you again, Nilfer, for um, hanging out with me and having this conversation. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It was great. And everyone for watching, I really appreciate your time. Please go and check out Feeling Lucky, the EP right now. You can go find it on all of the different streaming sites, or you can support your local station and listen to those singles that we keep having on Rotate right now. And hopefully we will get to see um, Noah for next year as she tours, fingers crossed. And um, for more sessions at home, make sure to keep it tuned um, to ND1023. Bye. See ya. Yeah, bye. You ask me one more question, I'm about to crash. And if you ask me one more question, and if you ask me one more question, I'm about to crash. I 
Look around, there's no competition with the heavy drinkers out. It's kinda like a presence. It's kinda like an attitude. It's kinda like a rhythm. Kinda like the way you move. It's kinda like a prison. When there's not much to see, you kinda like the distance to keep you away from me. Deep inside my own confusion, if I go him back. Deep inside my own illusion. And I was under the impression these things don't go by. And I was under this impression. It's kinda like a prayer. And the way lovers do, it's kinda like a river. And it kind of looks like you said if it's not too late. And I will make amends every lie the water. I can't swim against. And I believed your lies, and I believe in renovation. When it comes to confrontation, you meet me outside. You said there had been an invasion, but you didn't mind. It's kinda like a presence, it's kinda like an attitude, it's kinda like a rhythm. Kinda like the way you move, it's kinda like a prison. When there's not much to see, it kinda like the distance. Keep you up, away from me. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And if you ask me one more question, I'm about to cry. And if you ask me one more question, and if you ask me one more question, I'm about to crash. And if you ask me one more question. It's kinda like a presence. It's kinda like an attitude. It's kinda like a rhythm. Kinda like the. If you ask me one more question, I'm about to crash. If you ask me one more question, deep inside my own illusion, if I go and back. Look around, there's no competition with the heavy drinkers. It's kinda like a presence. Kinda like an attitude, kinda learn your rhythms, kinda learn the way you move. Said if it's not too late, and I will make amends. Every lie the water I can't swim against. You ask me one more question, I'm about to crash. 